Hi everybody. It is freezing and I, you know what? When we had the heat of the summer, I said I won't complain, I won't complain. <laughs> but we ran out. I thought I'm going to go out. I, for this video I needed a couple things that were in the gazebo and then I thought I'd better check on the new situation in the greenhouse. So we haven't quite got that organized, the cold came pretty quick and it wasn't working out there. So I had Jack out there and it was cold and he fixed it in a few minutes. <laughs> they come running back to the house and we always lock the back door and he locked me out and I'm like, help. I could have had my own secret ways of going around the house and got in, but Maggie came out and I said, go get dad, go get dad. <laughs> She's like little red tin. So anyway, he, he came to the rescue and let me in. And yesterday, yesterday, I thought, well, it's been cold. I better pick some snapdragons before they go and look. I'm glad I did because it froze last night. It's still freezing outside. It's quite cold. Yes, it's below freezing and uh, and we're getting used to it but the sky is blue like normal. <laughs> it's going to be a beautiful day. It has been a beautiful day. So, um, all kinds of things to talk about and we do have new subscribers that I get emails sometimes and they're having a little uh, difficulty um, with their orchids and they've tried various things and we hope we can help them out on this channel. And it's good to send me an email with your questions and I'm glad to do what I can to help and I, and I appreciate them. So the last, um, I want to talk about spiking your orchids because my orchids are starting to spike. They're starting to get new stems or spikes with little flowers bulbs starting to come. So um, the buds, they're just in their beginning stages and it can take two months from your beginning little spike to become a mature spike with beautiful flowers. But what do you want to do before that happens? Well, I'm going to be showing you all my orchids after I finish talking about this because I want to show you how each pot, I have a variety of pots because I do love to play with decorating and experiment what works and doesn't work and you learn more doing this. And uh, one thing about the traffic cones, they're so tall that if I stake them, there's one over here, this one. Now, I decided to stake it and all that's holding it up is I left, uh, I got a little piece of I keep these little stakes. Sometimes you get nice wooden ones, like different ones in different orchids. Sometimes you get these wire things. A lot of the times, this is what we get, these wire things. But sometimes I get these bamboo stakes and then these black ones on one of my last orchids. They're very nice too. So what I did was I carefully put a little one of those sticks in here and I just, um, this was the spike from last year and I don't usually leave them on but to hold it firm I very carefully and you have to do it very carefully so you don't injure roots and there is a lot of roots on this orchid that I could injure. And uh, a lot of leaves too. So I very carefully and not very far did I poke it down. So 
this particular orchid isn't um, spiking its new spike for this year yet, but it has this beautiful bloom on the one from last year. And I just staked it with a little stake. But you see, if I stake my traffic cones going up into the, the common waterfall uh, that goes up and then they come like a waterfall with all the flowers. If I do that, it is so high I can no longer put them up in my window where I like to put them. And uh, floor space is, uh, there's not a lot of it. So this one for now, I did want to put it up in the window because uh, I have one here. I'll show you a close-up later. Because what I've been doing is, <laughs> I've been, almost all of them are in spike and the ones that aren't, I thought, well, they might be just slow or maybe they didn't get the cool down as much as the other ones did because they like that 10 to 15 degree drop in temperature in the evening compared to the temperature in the daytime. Phalaenopsis really like that and it, it sends them little messages along with, but not as much as the length of day as it gets darker every night. I think that cool down is really important and some of mine that haven't spiked yet, I like to move closer to the glass because it's freezing outside. So at night, even though our furnace is coming on, it is staying cooler there. And when I first um, brought them in, they were getting cooler nights. We had such hot temperatures outside that even that, even though it wasn't getting near freezing, it was cooling down at night, 10 to 15 degrees cooler. And a lot of them have spiked early because of that. So now I'm just watching them and they will come at different times. So this one, I used a little steak. Now, yes, you have to be very careful that you don't injure the roots because we don't want to injure the roots. And there's many different things I've tried and you can get things online that I haven't done. I sometimes can be a little bit frugal. <laughs> but uh, I've come, I've started to do different things with different ones in my pot. So I thought I'd show you that one. And I'll put it back. There. Now, this one here, it, I'm going to show you a close-up, but this is last year's steak spike that came that I left and I normally don't leave those spikes in the past few years. I haven't left the, the spikes. I've trimmed them off when the flowers were gone, right back to about an inch from the top of the medium, above the little mark where there's a little uh, sign that a bud could come out. But I like to be about an inch from there or even two inches and later when it's all dried off I trim it back further but it's just to prevent any fungus or disease from getting in there so I like to do it an inch or two above the medium and then when it starts to accept that back into nutrition for the plant and that stem finishes dying off you can trim it back to a more acceptable and prettier look. So um, some of them, because I've got so many beads, my traffic cones have been very healthy. Uh, they, seem to, uh, they seem to be so happy in them. They're a bigger pot, so I always actually use, I like big pots, I like lots of room for the roots. The roots grow to accommodate that. Healthy roots, healthy plant. So these ones, now, they, it's, de it's deceiving because we have a stopper halfway down the traffic cones that actually makes, this is just a, it holds a bit of humidity on watering days, 
the part where there's nothing. But the trombocones have big air holes for good circulation, but the pots actually end about halfway on most of them. And we have wire in there to stop the bark, but the roots seem to love going in there. Now, um, the traffic cones are kind of a, a, a very flexible rubber, and so it helps hold moisture in. Yet they still like air circulation, so um, it's just a, a combination of things that really works. And you can do the same thing with a similar pot, uh, but for some reason they just love these traffic cones. So all of my traffic cones are almost all in double spike. This is last year's state spike, and I haven't staked these, and that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> I do ramble on. Okay, what I want to talk about is, you know, you're trying to decide if you should stake it, or just let it keep growing, or let it be natural. And I'm letting my traffic cones be natural because if I stake them sticking straight up, I won't get them in my window. And plus, they are high enough off of the ground that the flowers can fall. They're not going to be in my way. Uh, they're not going to be awkward. They're not going to be in another orchid's way because they're taller than a lot of the other pots. Now, uh, so, I'm not staking my traffic cones, but now some of my little ones, and this is Taiying Shin Blue Jay. She's still flowering. She's very pretty. She has nice leaves, kind of mottled, and uh, her She's not, like, she's smaller, so I, I didn't stake hers either. Now, I could have, but she's not going to have a waterfall type of flower either because she's so tiny. So I let her stay just natural how she wants to be. And this is a nice, firm stake. And if you decide to put a stick in there and put yours up more, very, very careful, especially before it becomes this long, when it's about really short here, and that's the top. Very carefully do you train this to go up, because you can snap it off very easily. So, um, this particular one, I am leaving. Now, this used to be a lamp. It was, it's upside down. The base of the lamp was here and Jack cut a hole that made it a little bit bigger for the orchid. And under the bottom where that hole is, is where the light post came out. But I liked it because it was terracotta and Jack, Jack had nailed, uh, drilled holes in it. And it has a fair amount of leaves. And I did leave last year's spike, but no flower has come. Now here we have a new spike coming. So this is a perfect size to start to stake. Now, you see that little, uh, one of our subscribers sent me some beautiful little clamp clips for my orchids. And uh, let me see if I can this right here without breaking anything. Oh, hmm. I have a, just a minute. I'll just put that there. Okay, so we have last year's spike that's good and firm. It's like putting a, a stake in, but then we have a new flower. Now, because this is so firm, I probably don't have to put a stake in there. In fact, if, if I want this one, being it's in a smaller pot, and I can very carefully 
very, very carefully. Bring that spike that's growing over and clamp it onto this. Now as it grows, I can keep clamping along here. Now, I could also show you what I did. Now, these are old, but I could also put one of these in and very carefully find a spot where there are new roots, and I'm always scared to do that, and it's often why I don't. And, uh, but Jack did make these years ago, and you can tell they're a little rusty. But these clamps are everywhere in thrift stores and whatever. And these are the old, the stakes that come from an orchid when you buy them. And what he did is he just brazed or soldered or whatever that to the hand of the clip. And, and it works really good. I have a few of these and I'll be getting more out, but it was cold out there and I see these and I grab them quickly. So you can bend this to go in towards the center of the plant. So once you clamp it on the edge of your pot, then I could have one already. You can see this. There it is, clamped on the edge of the pot and then up by the side of the butterfly. I could clamp them that way. Those are what I've been using because I hate to, yes, disturb my plant. Now I'm just going to undo that because I do not need it yet. And I have quite a few of these, all different lengths, and I'm probably going to get Jack to make me some more because they work on any size side of the pot. And I'll show you that too. So now my new glass ones that are just under experimentation. They're on the same watering schedule as my other orchids. And uh, this one is, do you remember when we did the plastic bottle experiment and I had uh, to, a, a, a reader was interested, one of our subscribers, and showed me the video of a fellow that had uh, uh, got, taken large water bottles and put holes, and I did the full experiment for long enough to decide it was awkward and not working for me. And uh, so both plants, there was two of them, this is one of them. Um, it's from the plastic bottle experiment. And the other one I can show you when we do our tour. <clears throat> I forget where I put it. But it had the other one came, uh, it looks like it's going it, to, it's going to send up a final spike and that will be it, a terminal spike they call it. So this one has lots of leaves. Once I put it in this plastic pot, the roots are glass glass. The roots are doing really well. It's improved in here over being in the plastic and it's got lots of leaves and it has a spike. So um, of the two, because the other one right away we had noticed it, it wasn't doing too well. Now if you have a, a glass container, you can see a little easier um, to put a stake in and you could pretty well go right down the side and you can see as the stake goes down that there's no roots there and you can um, pick a spot that it looks better and then you can just take this now it to me feels too firm to try and hook up there yet but pretty soon I'll be able to get it and it can go and it can be a waterfall. Um, so this is, this is another way and it's probably easier if you have a pot where you can see where the stake is going. So that is 
the reasoning behind how I feel about that. Now, we should, quite often people say, um, oh, here's it. We will come back to this one. You know, have I got a spike? Is this a spike or is this a aerial root? Now, uh, the one way to tell is when they're very small, small it is hard to tell. But the, the, the tip of a new spike coming is thinner usually than the tip of a root. Now, um, they look like little praying hands, but as it gets bigger, you'll notice like these aerial roots, because they would be aerial roots if they're coming above the surface like a spike. They come out as if they, maybe they're going to be a spike, but they are an aerial root. And as you notice, they are, they have a big growing tip. They're usually silvery gray. They can be shriveled if they've been there longer. Um, when I water my orchids like the traffic cones, I'll show you close up, a lot of these roots hanging all down here. I spray them when I put them in the shower because that's where I water these. And I make sure the roots get a good bit of moisture also because they're older, they're dry, but you know, I just leave them. And if I, uh, we'll talk about repotting the traffic cones on another day, but I have learned over uh, experience not to um, take, try and loosen the roots. They hate that. They don't want to go through that. So we won't, um, we don't want to disturb them so because it's just bark, I just shake it all out and then pour in some new bark and leave my plant stable how it is. So, but anyway, now, so now the, the bud, uh, the difference between a spike is, you see the little uh, places where flowers can come out, the little joints. Uh, the aerial roots, do not have these little persons where we could get a branching of our orchid. Aerial roots will just be long. They can get more roots coming off. But the difference is uh, slimmer usually, but not always, but the color. And then you'll see little buds start to come on the tip and then you know it's not a root. But once they get a certain height, you're almost sure to see the beginning of flower buds coming here and not here. So that's just to help. One of the questions I had uh, from somebody that's new, and if you if you know someone that needs help, um, don't be afraid to. You know, if you see them picking out an orchid, maybe you can help or. You know, there you are looking at the orchids and there's someone there that just can't tell which one to take, whether to take, you know, maybe you can help them a bit because I know you're educated and maybe they do need help. <laughs> so, and I just want to run in the living room and get my photo album because I did promise a couple people I would show them a picture of Henry and so I'm going to do that before we go for our tours. So, hold on. <laughs> There. I used to have a great big wall um, down the hallway and I had corkboard all up there and I had all the family pictures there and um, then I found this and we had to put, we put in a, a and took off the door because of, the door opened into the spare room and when guests came it always took up so much space in there. And so we took that door off, which means we put up a sliding barn door, which is beautiful in the hallway, 
takes up no space in the hallway or in the room, but it meant I have to take my pictures off the wall. So I found this at the thrift store for a dollar or two. It was so nice, and so I thought, okay. And so <laughs> I put my pictures in there. So in here, I know I have a picture of Henry. Yes. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're coming. Because I always talk about Henry and our escapades. So, so, um... Here he is. He'd come over to the house, and he used to play violin. I could go down to his house. This is in my kitchen. I had an old wood stove, and he would he'd come over, and he would play his violin. <laughs> and um, this picture is him at his place with one of his prize bulls. This is how he looked when I met him. And uh, just trying to find. And down here, he, this is Henry and the neighbor from across the street helping build a fence down on the way to the farm. I, they taught me how to chop wood. <laughs> Henry and, and Lloyd, they taught me how to chop wood and they had an ar argument of what way is the best way to do it. But uh, he was a good friend and one Christmas, this is him making breakfast. One, one Christmas I made all these stockings and he never really got that much at Christmas time. His family was, you know, living further away, and he was an old single bachelor. So I'd made a Christmas stocking, and I had snuck down <laughs> and hung it on his barn so that when he went out to feed the horses, he would see it there. So when we got over there in the morning, because he invited us over for pancakes, he was making pancakes, and he had the stocking uh, hanging up there, and you'll see it in this picture. Wait. <laughs> There's Henry. There's the stocking I made him. It, he never said anything, and it was hanging on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Rosemary when she was riding a pony. But anyway, this is one of my milk cows. Here. Oh, it's hard to see if you got that, but... Anyway, I'll show you a close-up of that as we're doing the orchid tour. So, um, yeah, fun days, fun days. A wonderful man helped me to learn a lot of things. <laughs> so, anyway, I wanted to share that with you because I always talk about Henry. And now you can picture him when, uh, when I'm talking about him, you can picture him. <laughs> but... Uh, there was one time then, he was helping me, I had a, I, I, when we moved, first moved down, we had the truck full of stuff, and I had a scuba tank, because I used to, uh, on the coast, scuba dive, it was behind the seat of the truck, coming down Vancouver Island, and I whole, heard this big hiss, what? The battery pack. You know what? I think I better. I think I better hurry up and quick because it's giving me notes. I might run out and we're gonna do the tour. Okay. To continue at another day. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Okay. Let's go here. So. So, there's. Henry making breakfast and the stocking and playing the violin and the fence and my milk cow. So there we go. And here's the close up.
these are, this is the older roots, and they will sometimes send out sprouts and newer ones. So aerial roots and a spike. You would see these buds coming, starting to form, even in the little stages. So here, like these roots are years old because they've been in here. These are all roots. But I make sure on watering days, once a week and most of the time, and in the heat of the summer, twice a week, that these get sprayed, but they are stuck here. And the first time I repotted one, I thought about, I unstuck them, I had it in the shower, and it suffered, so... I don't want to ever do that again. So here is your flower spike and here Okay, I had trouble with my camera. Jack bought me a new battery pack and I think I better hook it up because it's getting older like I am and it it's uh wants a replacement. <laughs> Anyway, I want to finish the story and then we're going to do a quick tour to explain a few things in the windows uh, and I'll attach this to the other video before I send it. And this is a picture. That'll get me in there. Somebody's calling. Um, this is a, a picture when I first moved to Salmon Arm and had the farm and Henry Kate started coming over to help me, and here we are doing some digging out in the yard. And I would have been, um, Rosemary was 10, I would have been 30. Here you go. Trying to get it good. Everything's backwards on a camera. There we go. Okay. <laughs> oh dear, those were the days. Okay, we're gonna do, oh, the finish of the story. I had a scuba tank behind the pickup seat, seat moving here. And when we bought the farm and it uh, hissed and those things can take off and I thought oh my goodness and I hurried up and put my foot in the, on the clutch and um, I did something to my ankle and then got to the ferry my leg was all swollen I could drive ended up going to the hospital and they had to put a, a cast they couldn't cast it it was still swollen but I was limping I couldn't walk and this was after we moved in, shortly after, and my leg was still funny and he was helping me dig that picture. So anyway, let's do that tour. Okay. And hope the camera lasts because I haven't got the new battery in yet, but I will. Okay. Let's start in this window. And also, if you are using misters, be it the bowl type or a bowl period just with a mister throwing in. This is a fish. Clean them. They're bad for you and they're bad for the flowers if you don't keep the bowls and the water in them clean. No matter what kind of uh, mister you're using. So here we go. Oh, I brought this orchid into this window because these are the north windows they're a little cooler and it wasn't spiking and I'm trying to encourage a spike and some of these are spiking there's a little spike here and this is the one I was showing you and it's got a spike and there's a spike here and there's another couple little ones coming so that's what's happening in that window. And then we'll go over here. Of course, I put Tang Ying Shin Blue back. 
and we have a little spike coming here and these are in the north window. Now in these windows at night I have, I'm going to turn it on for a minute, I have lights on both, just this one side of the window. Every night after supper when it's dark I turn them on till we go to bed. Do not leave your lights on all night because they do not like it. And my big lip is here and she has a little spike coming. And you can see that the tip is like praying hand. It's thinner with a pointy shape. And here we have the old, the old spike from last year spiking and a new spike. And I will be having to put this one upright. I have not done it yet. And things are going good in the terrarium. I still think I'm losing one though, unless a new leaf comes, but the rest are doing good. So that's that window. Now we'll slowly turn, try not make you dizzy. And these are the traffic cones and, and here's the older aerial roots. Of course, don't look. They're still healthy. They're still doing a job. You can miss them and on watering day give them extra water. But this orchid has lots of leaves. And it's doing good. And it's still, flowers are coming and coming and there's some more. And that's on the old one from last year. Okay. Here. This is the one I've got by the window trying to get a spike to come. And of course this one has Two, I'm leaving natural. They're curling around to get some light. Even the one on last year's spike. So we have two coming there. And up here, the same, we have two. Spike coming here and up there. And here we have the same. These are all the traffic cones. I made my watering day easier because they all go into the shower. So this is the old state spike from last year and this is the new one. So we have lots of spikes. We have one coming here. I uh, don't think this one has one yet. So they have got their misters on and because it's so cold and their furnace is running. So they'll be on for at least probably I'll run them five hours a day. Don't run them all day. They do like a rest. And in here, these this is the twin. And these are the two that were in the red pot I took out. And I put one in a porcelain pot and one in a glass pot. And they both have their, their um, spikes from last year. This one may be starting to go. It didn't have one when I put it in there, but it might be something. But it has a new spike. And this one is going after the old spike from last year, and it has a new spike. And over here... We have a spike, and back here we have a spike from the plastic bottle experiment. And up here I put these here because they're not, oh, this one here has a spike. The old one isn't spiking, but the new one is. Now, I'm waiting, I'm going to do another video on this. After dark burgundy smile very soon. I'm still giving it a bit of water because I did hear that if if they're turning dry on the edge, it's a sign to quit. But I mean it's getting near fall, so I will be cutting back, but 
Not yet, but I, I'm not watering every second day anymore. I have to cut back because it's been getting lots of water. And, and finally, found Memorial Reddick getting a new leaf after losing one. Yay. So, oh, here's the one, the other plastic experiment, the one that's going to have the terminal spike at some time. It's done absolutely nothing. Did nothing in the plastic bottle, doing nothing in the pot. Still alive, but barely, I guess. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for joining me, and I'm going to get this video out to you really soon. Bye for now.